Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CEC Edusit live lecture. Dear friends, we would like to tell you all that uh, from today onwards we are starting a new series and this series is on organizational behavior. This is the first session and we would like to tell you all that today we will be talking on introduction to organizational behavior. And for this uh, very discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios Dr. Kakuli Sen. Dr. Kakuli Sen is a professor of organizational behavior. She is a dean uh, in school of humanities and social sciences in one of the leading private universities. She has almost 21 years of experience both in academics and industry and uh, once again she uh, is uh, with us. Um, uh, so we would like to welcome our guest uh, Dr. Kakuli Sen and uh, let's welcome her and let's try to know more and more about organizational behavior. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Edusit lecture. Thank you Ms. Gritika, thank you so much. Good morning everybody, I am Dr. Kakuli Sen and as introduced I will be talking about a very interesting subject called introduction to organization behavior and this particular session organization behavior is a very interesting subject it is a combination of two different words one is organization and the other is behavior so it has many implications to it if in a nutshell I had to tell you just for an introduction purpose it is basically how people behave in organizations why do they behave like that and how do we control, predict, influence their behavior? But all of that will come in a while. First, let me tell you what are we going to cover in this session. The session objectives would be what is an organization? What are its basic functions? Who are the people who manage these organizations and conduct these various basic functions? What are the typical skills that these people need in order to run an organization smoothly? So, these are the four or five things that we are going to be taking in this particular session. Now, let me take them one by one. First, we start with what is an organization? I am sure you must have seen so many different types of organizations or you may be calling them companies in your day-to-day -day language. These are organizations which have at least two or more people who come together, work together to achieve a predetermined or pre-agreed goal. Now it is very important that people should come together and they should determine in advance what are their goals. Every company, every organization will have certain goals to achieve. Now they, this, may, this might comprise of two different levels of goal. When a company starts functioning, it has one particular goal or multiple goals which it tries to achieve. When it works, it has to work with people who are individuals who will have their own independent goals. Like for example, if you want to start working in any organization, some of you may want to earn a lot of money, some of you may want to uh, work with a particular brand and feel good about it. Some of you may want to travel to different places. Depending on whatever your personal ambitions, personal goals are, you join any particular company. Similarly, any company as you know, they will also identify for people who will bring those skills that are required to fulfill their goals. So the goals that an organization has are called superordinate goals. Those goals are important for any organization to be fulfilled, to be sustainable, to remain in the business. Whereas the people who come and work with them, they will have their own goals. So in terms of levels, the organizational goals will be known as superordinate goals and the individual goals will be known as subordinate goals. We must remember that as long as the subordinate goals are in line with superordinate goals, the organization will continue to have the person or the employee. As long as the subordinate goals are in line with superordinate goals, the person would also like to be in the company and work in the long term. We have to understand that organizations will develop over a period of time. Any small company that you may know of, your friend may have started or you may start an enterprise, you may have started in a very small manner. It will eventually, maybe just with two people or three people, some of your friends may get together and start a business, etc. Over a period of time, the organization will grow. 
grow in its business, grow in its uh, reach, grow in its number of people, grow in the services, grow in the products, grow in locations, etc. And it will become gradually bigger. As it becomes bigger and differs in size and business, there will be many more changes that will keep coming. Now, when we say company or an organization, what do we mean? Organizations can have different types of products. Any item that you use, let's say uh, your daily day-to-day use items like a toothpaste, uh, pen, pencil, uh, your uh, clothing, your shoes, your food items, anything that you use are called products. Whereas there are other things that you use like for example you book a taxi or you book a holiday or some other thing or maybe you book your um, uh, mobile plans, internet plans. Those are not products but those are services that you are getting. So companies will be manufacturing products or offering services but overall they are companies, they are organizations which have distinct clear goals, which have people, they have their own, own individual independent goals, they all come together where the company fulfills individual goals as well and individuals fulfill the company's goal and that is how they are mutually interdependent. So if I had to talk about certain elements of an organization, each organization will have a distinct purpose, the goal that we are talking about. Each organization is composed of people who are called employees of that organization. All organizations will develop some deliberate structure of managers and non-managers. Deliberate structure means that when they start functioning, initially when there are very few people, they, everybody does everything. But over a period of time, when the work specializes, then different people take over different types of responsibilities. When that work further increases, then there are managers who do that. There are non-managers who do the other kind of work, who do the routine kind of work. I'll talk about it in a while. So if I had to uh, define the organization, it is basically a deliberate arrangement of people to accomplish some specific purpose through a set of organizational or management activities. I hope we have covered whatever the organization has in different ways and then we have come up with one kind of a definition. Now if I say, if you look at this slide, it says through a set of organizational or management activities. Now what are those organizational or management activities? Every organization will have a set of activities. It may differ from organization to organization. But what are those organizational activities? Certain basic activities are same. Within those basic activities, there would be different kinds of activities depending on the product or the service that they are dealing with. It may differ. But overall, the, the group of activity, the nature of the activity may be different, but the group of activity would be similar. So let's look at what is management now. Management is understood by the process of coordinating work activities so that they are completed efficiently and effectively with and through people. Now if you look at this definition, there are different elements in the same definition which are like process of coordinating. Now what do we mean by process? Process basically means step by step activities. Whenever you dif uh, discuss a process which means it is a step by step activity. One step will be following the other step, then the next step and then the next step. So only if you follow that particular process of step by step activities, you will be able to reach whatever you had thought of reaching. So the first process, first element of this definition is that it is a process oriented activity. Management is a process oriented. You have to do one process after the other, one step after the other in order to complete the process and reach a desirable destination. Next we have said coordinating, coordinating work activities. Coordinating this will distinguish a managerial position from a non-managerial position. Just now we discussed that there are managerial activities and non-managerial activities. 
So when a manager, when there are several types of activities happening in an organization, manager will be coordinating the different types of functions, different types of activities that are happening. That is also part of the manager's job. Next element that we are discussing here very importantly efficiency. Efficiency is understood as getting the most output from the least amount of inputs. Efficient doing something efficiently meaning it means that you, you use the minimum possible resources to get the maximum possible output. Now if efficiency means doing the things in the right manner, the more mistakes you make, the more losses you incur for the organization and it, it does not remain sustainable in the long run. So it is, it is important that we do something in the correct manner for making the least amount of mistakes. For that basic planning is required. So that also is part of the manager's job which we will discuss. Then the next element that we have said in the definition is effectiveness. It is not just important to do things in the correct manner. It is extremely important to do the right things at the right time in the right manner. I am sure you must have heard of this. So effectiveness is understood by activities, completing activities so that the organizational goals are attained. You remember we had said that every organization will have certain goals, certain plans, certain targets. So those activities which lead us towards getting those targets fulfilled are understood as the right kind of activities. So management process is not just doing the right, uh, doing the things in the correct manner. It is also doing about, it is also about doing the correct things and doing them in the correct fashion. That is how the management process is defined. And as we said, doing them step by step, one after the other, so that we manage the sequence, we reach at a particular place where it is important to be and in the entire process, we coordinate the activities. So in a nutshell, I will, I'm describing this particular thing that I discussed as management process. This is how we look at it. We, we know what resources we have to use. We know that uses, resources are limited. So we manage the usage of those resources in the best possible manner, which is understood as efficiency. On the other hand, we have the goal attainment in our mind that, okay, this organization wants to have, wants to achieve these kind of goals. So these are the ends that we need to meet. So we do it in the most effective manner. So two things that we keep in mind are low waste and high attainment. We use the resources in the maximum possible manner in the best possible manner so that there is least wastage and at the same time there is high attainment from the organizational point of view. What does management strive for? Management strives for low resource wastage means high efficiency and high goal attainment which means high effectiveness. That is understood as the management activity or the process. Now we discuss we again further discuss the management process and who does these management processes. So if we are looking at the definition once again, it is basically a set of management or ongoing activities, decisions and work activities in which managers engage people, resources as they plan, organize, lead and control. Managerial activities are usually done in a continuous manner as we discussed that these are process oriented activities and they are supposed to be done in a step manner one after the other so that we reach our desirable destination in terms of the target or the goal that we have thought of. And who does these? These are done by managers. Who are managers? Managers are people who work with and through other people by coordinating their work activities in order to accomplish organizational goals. Managers will ideally have people under them and this is the, this is the hierarchy or all the organizational levels that you will find. Managers also could be of different types. You have at the bottom, if you look at the picture, this, is, look, this looks like a pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, which is like much wider than the rest of them, there are non-managerial employees who are non-managers. Then you have first line managers, people who have the least experience, but they are in the category of managers. Those would come in the first line managers. They are directly 
con controlling, supervising the non-managerial employees. Then controlling the first line managers will be the middle managers who are lesser than the first line managers and then they control the first line managers directly and indirectly the non-managerial employees. And right on top you will see there are top managers who are the senior managers of any organization. Within the top managers every managerial level that you see will also have further divisions within them. So top, within the top managers also while you will have one MD, one CEO, there will be several other senior managers, vice presidents under them. Similarly in the middle managers you may have managers, deputy managers, assistant managers etc. In the first line managers you may have further junior managers. So this is how the organizational levels of managers and non-managers are available in any organization. This is to further explain that how does managerial hierarchy happen? The first line managers will manage the work of the non-managerial individuals who are directly involved with the production or creation of the organizational products. Just a while back we talked about that organizations can come out with products which are tangible, which you can actually use, consume like a toothpaste or a food item etc. Or they could come out with services which you may not be tangible but you will receive those services and pay the company for the services. Next category is the middle managers who are all the managers between the first level and the top level of the organization. So they are in between the top level and the first level and they manage the first line managers. And the top managers that you saw on the top of the pyramid are responsible for making organization wide decisions and establishing the plans and goals that affect the entire organizations. We have to understand that there are different, while we talked about there are different categories of activities or uh, line of work that people do in an organization. The non-managers will do day to day work, the first line managers will control those day to day work and make sure that that work is happening. The middle level managers will take stock of how the first line manage, uh, managers are working and then report and Function, report the functionalities of the other levels of the organization to the top managers. The top managers will decide what the industry, what the organization is supposed to do, whether it is going in the right direction, what are the other things that the organization can do and that is how they will take decisions both for within the organization, the products and the services that they are dealing with, the people that they have employed as well as the future growth of the organization. And as we discuss that who looks after who, I must also tell you a very important term which is understood as span of control. Now span of control means the number of people or employees directly reporting to a particular manager. So when we, when we looked at the first line manager, the second line manager or the middle manager and the top managers, the number of people reporting to the first line manager who will primarily be non-managerial employees that is understood as the first line manager's span of control. Now there will be there'll be many more people or employees or non-managerial employees who will be reporting to the first line manager. So a first line manager's span of control, direct span of control would be larger. Then we move on to the middle level manager who will be controlling the first line managers. As you saw the pyramid, the non-managerial employees are many more in number. So the number of people reporting to the first line manager could be more. Then from the first line manager, some of them will report to different kinds of middle manager. So the number of people, number of first line managers reporting directly to the middle manager is the middle manager's span of control. Now further, the middle number of middle managers reporting to the top manager will be further limited because they will be taking different decisions, managerial strategic decisions. So that number of people who would be reporting to the top manager will be even lesser. So but then that is the top manager's span of control. Now you must understand that while the span of control will reduce as you go up the level but the nature of decision, the nature of activity, the nature of reporting will be different. For the non-managerial employees it will be a day-to-day -day work that they will be reporting to the first line manager. 
For the first line manager, it will be a consolidation of those kind of work which they will report to the middle manager. From the middle manager, the report that goes to the top manager, the top managers will make strategic decisions based on those reporting that is happening and finally that is how the top managers will take the decision and take the company forward. That is what that is how we have discussed. So in this session, we have discussed that what is an organization, who are the people who run an organization, what are the different levels of people who are there in the organization, what kind of reporting relationships happen and what do we understand by span of control. We have also understood what is an organizational process, what is a management process, what are the different elements of the management process and how are these processes intertwined together to make an organization successful. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the next session of Introduction to Organizational Behavior. I am Dr. Kakoli Sen and I will take you through this session. In our previous session, we talked about what is organization, what are the different levels of people that make an organization, what are the different management processes involved in the organization's successful success behavior. Today I am going to talk about what are the different managerial functions within an organization. No matter whatever the organization is doing, whether it is manufacturing a product or offering a particular service, there will be certain management activities which will be similar in all organizations and they are as like planning, organization, leading and controlling. These are the four basic functions which exist in all organizations. Every organization as you know by now that has to have a distinct goal, a distinct purpose of being in the business. So when an organization starts, it starts with some kind of a goal. People will come together whether it is, whether it is, it is two people or more, they will come together to think of a certain goal that they would like to achieve and how do they achieve that? They will achieve with the help of the organization by getting people 
who have certain skills to come together and work for the organization. But before that, they need to realize, they need to finalize what kind of goals will they fulfill. So they will define certain goals. They will also need to define strategies to achieve those goals and develop plans to integrate and coordinate those activities. So planning is an extremely important step or part of the entire management process or their functions. If you do the planning right, then you can strategize right, you will have the right kind of resources, you will need to have the right kind of people, right kind of activities to be done. So planning is extremely important as a managerial function. If you look at yourself, when you are going to achieve certain thing, when you fix up a target that I'm going to do well in this particular exam or I'm going to achieve this particular degree, whatever you think of yourself as a target, you can say that, okay, this is my goal. This is what I want to achieve. In order to achieve that, then you discuss or then you think of plans of achieving that particular target. That is at an individual level. So when we translate it into an organizational level, every organization must have a particular objective, must have a particular plan or a goal which the entire number of people or employees working for that organization will need to agree and understand and work together towards it. So once that goal is identified, then we need to work around how do we plan to organize, plan to achieve that particular goal. That those particular plans that we are making are understood as strategies towards achieving that particular goal. Now your goal could be anything like maybe making a very big name for yourself in a particular industry. It could be you want to be known as the best provider of a particular service. You want to have the largest market share. You want to be known as a very people-centric company. You want to be known as a very ethical company. Whatever your targets are, accordingly you will need to devise your activities around it. So that is your most important managerial function as a planning. <clears throat> Next is organizing. We've discussed that, okay, if this is what we want to achieve and this is how we will go and achieve, how do I get to achieve there? How do I get to be there? So which means I will need to organize my people. I will need to organize my resources. I will need to have all those things which will help me reach that particular goal. So I will need to determine what task are we going to be doing? Who will do what? How are the tasks to be grouped? And how are the structures to be organization, structures of the organization to be finalized? <clears throat> so if you look at it, this is all a step-by-step -step activity as we discussed in our last session. First, we plan, what do we do? Next, we plan, how do we do? Third, we plan, how do we, what are the things required to be there? And accordingly, how do we group them? What is the structure that we make? Who does what? Why does he do that? So that, you know, that, that is determined with the help of what kind of skills does one person have so that he can do best in that particular chosen area. After we have decided that, okay, this is what we will do. This is how we will do. These are the people who will do it. It is also very important to see, keep noting, keep tracking whether this is happening in exactly the way we have discussed and decided to do it. So that is where the leading and controlling roles will come in. You need to tell people that this is how things are to be done. You also need to keep looking, keep identifying, keep following whether those things are happening in the right manner or not. If there is a mistake that is happening, if somewhere there is a gap, we need to plug it then and there. That is a great managerial activity. You plan it as the best possible manner, but while executing, while implementing, it is possible that some of those plans may look, may do not, may not uh, actually function the way you thought they will. There could be many reasons for that. There could be environmental issues, there could be last minute trouble, any problems that may have occurred last minute. So management is a dynamic activity. You, it is not enough just to plan and tell people what is to be done. You will have to keep looking at whether those things are being done that way. Are the people motivated enough to do it? Are we using the right resources? Are we using the resources in the right manner? So these are a continuous set of activities that the managers need to involve themselves into. So if you look at, 
it says leading talks about directing and motivating all involved parties and dealing with employee behavior issues that is an extremely important organizational behavior topic where we look at why why do people behave in certain manner and can is there there would be some people who will be extremely motivated and doing their job very well on the other hand there could be some other people who may not be motivated at all and may be doing mistakes or may not be wanting to do the right the work in the right manner so a manager's job is to identify those those behavior issues good and bad and encourage the good make find out reasons why the bad behavior is happening and uh, ensure that that bad behavior is modified people are motivated people are guided people are trained and put skilled into the job that they are doing and finally controlling monitoring the activities to ensure that they are going as they were planned so management is a very process oriented but at the same time a very dynamic you cannot just set the process and be out of it you have to be at it so and then further if we look at specific categories of managerial behavior those were the day to day behaviors that i was talking about next we are talking about broadly if we look at uh, their managerial activities managerial role we can divide them into three broad categories which are interpersonal informational and decisional now there are certain activities in any organization which are like figure head activities which are like ceremonial activities maybe signing of papers maybe cutting a ribbon maybe addressing wishing people etc though or receiving people those could be activities which can be called interpersonal or those are involved involving people or duties which are uh, in dealing with people all the time next comes informational roles informational roles would mean receiving collecting and disseminating information now in today's information centric uh, organizational context that we are talking about the business context is extremely information heavy today if you do not have any particular information you are backdated you have to keep uh, keep be aware of all the information that is happening around you and make use of it in your business day to day dealing business activities if you don't do that if you are not aware of what's happening in the market you are you may you have you stand the chance of losing out on important opportunities which your counterparts or business opponents may make use of so it is important to receive a huge information that is all around you make sense of that information and use it to your own advantage the third role that we are talking about is the decisional role this revolves around making choices all the information that you are getting all the work functions that are happening in your organization you have to make decisions whether we are doing the right thing whether we are going in the right direction how do we further improve our organizations how do we grow as a business so those are understood as decision making roles so managers will have a variety of roles where they will not only make some of those those roles will be like uh, figurehead or uh, uh, symbolic or ceremonial in nature whereas some other roles would be extremely important strategic in nature but overall a manager has to diff do different kinds of functions don different kinds of roles and each role is as important as the other one so managers will be uh, have will be getting different roles various roles that will also be determined by the different hierarchy that they are at if their level is different they will also need different kinds of roles now i'm going to tell you about three different categories of skills a manager needs in fact these roles these skills are needed by all the people all the employees in the organization but at the same time we can divide them into different categories of roles you must understand this very carefully first is the technical skills technical skills are those skills which are defined by the skills required to do well in your chosen area of activity now you may it does not really mean that you have to have a technical qualification if you want to be good in the accounts or finance functions your skills required by the organizations to do well in the accounts and finance section or finance department are known as your technical skills 
If you want to be in the marketing or selling or customer relations or operations, the skills required to do a good job in those areas are understood as technical skills. So technical skills are the skills required to be in your chosen area of function. It is very important to have very high set of technical skills. Whichever area you may have chosen, the better or the sound you are in your technical skills, the higher your chances of doing a particular process or an activity in the best possible manner. You remember we've talked about efficiency and effectiveness. It is not just important to do the right things. It is also very important to do the right things in the right manner. So your technical skills will help you get a job. Whichever function, whichever study you, you take up as your major subject, make sure that you are aware of what are the skills required in that particular area to do a good job and you pick up those sufficient technical skills. Next skills that we are talking about are human skills. Now human skills are the ability to work well with other people both individually as well as in a group. This is again a very important skill because day in and day out in any organization you will deal with people and the better you are with dealing with people, the successful you will be as a manager. Next is the conceptual skills. This is the ability to think and to conceptualize about abstract and complex situations. You have to look at the organization as a whole rather than different levels. You have to understand the relationships between subunits and you have to visualize how the organization fits into the broader environment. Now, if we look at the different levels at which these skills are required, you will see on the picture that is available for you that the level of the importance varies with the level that you take up as the different organization level. At the lower management, you will need more of your technical skills. Whereas in the top management, you will need more of your conceptual skills, which means at the lower level, you will do more of your hands-on related, your uh, particular area specific skills will be required more. Whereas as you go up the hierarchy at the top management skills, you will not need that much of your technical skills, but you will need to evolve and look at the organization in the broader sense and see what kind of other futuristic steps can we take, how do we make the organization bigger and better in every possible sense. So while conceptual skills and technical skills will differ as you go up the hierarchy, human skills as you see is quite a constant. At every level you will need good deal of human skills because at no level will you work at no level will you not work with people. So your ability to deal with human beings, your ability to talk to people, relate to people, lead them, motivate them, encourage them, counsel them, advise them or be friends with them, spread positive vibes, all of these are important at all levels. More so at the middle level and the top level where you are you are looking you are not you know at the technical level at the lower level if you make mistakes it is possible to correct them but at the senior level if you make mistakes with people if you misjudge them if you demotivate them if you rub them the wrong way it is extremely difficult to go back and turn it around and start afresh any work which is a mistake it can be started afresh you can just erase it you can start the process all over again but if you happen to annoy people, if you happen to demotivate people, if you happen to uh, destabilize people in some way or the other, it is extremely difficult to go back and you know, start afresh on a clean slate. So we have to make sure that we, we remember this and when we are dealing with people, we, are, we take care of how we deal with people. That, makes the, that brings out the best in you and that is how you evolve as, the, as a very good manager and become an asset to an organization. Now if we look at an organization, you can see the picture on your screen where the organization is understood as an open system. <clears throat> where there are certain inputs which are taken from the environment around you which could be raw material, which could be human resource, which could be money, which could be the latest technology, which could be the information. All, this, all these inputs are taken and <clears throat> put into a process which is like the management process. So there is a transformation that happens. How does this transformation happen? 
This happens with the help of the kind of work the employees are contributing, the kind of activities that are followed in an organization, the kind of technology that is applied there and the kind of operations that is happening in the organizations. So it is like taking the input from the environment, making it go through a particular transformation process which is like the day to day work that we do and then there is an output which comes out of it. So the output would be in the result of it could be financial result, it could be human result, it could be information, it could be product services etc. So all these inputs go through a particular process and come out with outputs, those outputs are put back again in the environment. So all those things that are like the raw material that was taken went through a particular process, came out as an output. So we as consumers would use that output and give certain kind of input back to the organization as maybe feedback or as maybe repeat behavior or maybe we are not happy with the product or service, we will not go there. Even not buying a particular product or service is input for them because that is an information input for them. So this entire cycle goes on and on and on and that is how the organization's system works. Now every organization needs to keep the system on. The moment we become, this is known as an open system. Whereas you are taking input from the environment, working within the environment for a transformation process, coming out with an output. This output will go back in some manner or the other as an input and this works on like a cycle, it goes on. The moment you stop taking information from the environment, you do not progress much because then you become a closed system. So this is important to understand that organization must operate as an open system. If you've thought that you're going to come out with this kind of a product and you start and launch a particular product <clears throat> without taking any feedback from the environment as such, you will not be able to flourish much. So that is why we must understand that organization is an open system whereas we operate within the, or within the environment. We keep taking feedback from the environment and we keep giving our own product services or feedback to the environment. <clears throat> this is I just what I just talked about that environment there is a, it, is a, it is an open system where we give and take from the organization. Now how do, when I talked about the different kinds of managerial activities, we must also understand that what do managers do in an organization. We have to understand that in order to make an organization flourish, it is important that the managers coordinate different types of work activities. They are, they ensure that independent, inter, in, first of all independent uh, parts must work together in order to be efficient and effective in their work. <clears throat> they must also work very interdependent, very uh, closely and interdependent because there are organizations, uh, subsets or different functions which are interdependent on each other. When I say interdependent, we have to realize that when it, within an organization there are different parts, there are functions like there could be sales functions, there could be customer relations, there could be manufacturing, there could be uh, operations, there could be quality functions, there could be uh, delivery functions etc. All these are interrelated. Only if they work together in coordination with each other, the organization will be able to achieve its own objective. If one department decides that we will work independently and not uh, contribute to the other person or not be uh, in sync with what the other person requires, not give them the inputs at the right time, the other department's work will suffer. And in that, if that department's work suffer, it will not be able to cater to the market probably or to some other department. So we have to realize and work together in organization in a very coordinated manner. And who does this coordination? The manager's job is to coordinate all the functions properly and make sure that we come out with the right kind of output. All the decisions and actions taken in one organization area will affect the other areas. We are all interdependent on each other. Each department or each function is an internal customer to another department. So unless the internal customers within themselves cater to each other's needs at the right time in the right manner, the organization goals will not be fulfilled in the right manner. Also, it depends on situations how managers need to use different approaches and techniques. It will depend on different situations if the managers need to make changes. That is why I said that management process is a dynamic process. You cannot just plan and strategize and stick to it. Looking at the situation, you will have to keep changing your strategies and techniques, not just with the inputs, not just with the machines, but also with people. 
these are the different kinds of there could be different types of organizational variable depending on the size depending on the technology that you are using depending on the environmental uncertainty and individual differences you will have to keep changing your strategies to understand okay which way we are going and how do we achieve or reach there if this is how we will sum up the key points where we will talk of that <clears throat> this is uh, or we today we've talked about different organizations where we have talked about how do organizations are set up what are organizations it is a set of two or more people who have a definite purpose who will have to come together think of a pre decided goal and that is how they will come towards the organizational goals every organization will have their own goal their own targets their own ambitions they will have a set of people who will have the right kind of skills and then they will come together agree on those goals and achieve, uh, work together to achieve those goals organizations are managed by people who are called employees of that organization so whenever you start working with an organization you will be known as an employee of that particular organization within the organization within the employee pool there will be some people who will be managers some people who will be non managers generally managers are known as white collar workers and non managers are known as blue collar workers blue collar workers are those people who work primarily with their hands with their their hands on people they are work they may be working with machines tools equipments which are like a routine process so these people are called blue collar workers and th these are the kind of jobs that they manage on the other hand people who need different kinds of skill advanced skills technical human or conceptual skills those people may be coming in the category of managers within managers also there will be first line managers middle level managers and top line managers who will be managing these different level of people we've also talked about what is span of control span of control means the number of people who directly report to you we've seen that it appears an organizational hierarchy always looks like a pyramid where there are more people at the bottom of the pyramid as you go up the hierarchy there are lesser and lesser people so ideally there would be lesser people reporting as you go up the different levels at different levels you will also need different kinds of skills you will need more of technical skills at the lower level where you are working with your hands machines equipments as you grow up the go up the hierarchy you will need more of human skills at the top line you will need most of it is conceptual skills you must also remember that within the organization when there are different departments there will be department heads also so if you look at each department as an independent individual entity within that also there will be a lower junior manager there will be a middle manager like uh, team leaders etc and there will be a manager who will be the who will be the senior manager for that particular unit so when we are talking about technical people and conceptual skills conceptual skills will be required even by a department head what kind of conceptual skills he will not think he will not need to think of the organizational levels in the sense where will this organization go from you know 5 years from now he will not need to think of at strategic levels or for the entire organization but he will still need to think strategically for his own department how does he increase the um, efficiency of the department how does he reduce the wastage of the department how does he make the organizational department more effective so these kind of skills will be required at different levels in different manner we've also talked about the different uh, activities that managers do like for example they need to plan organize lead and control organizations every organization will have a particular set of goal which are known as the superordinate goals they will have subordinate goals individuals will have their own personal ambitions to come and work for a particular organization the organization must make sure that they are looking after the people's aspirations and goals and career ambitions life ambitions they are able to meet their life cycle needs etc and to keep them motivated so while organizations while uh, organizations will need to look after people the people will need to give their 100% and look after the organizational success 
So managers, how do managers do it? Managers will need to plan different kinds of activities. Once they have decided the goal, they have decided, they have got their own people, they will have to identify what activities will be done, who will be doing these kind of activities, what skills are required to do these kind of activities, how do the managers get together and organize the different resources that are required for uh, making those activities proper, foolproof, effective and efficient. They will also need to lead their own people, give them suggestions, motivate them, uh, uh, in increase their efficiency by giving them tips on how to increase their efficiency and generally give them training, give them the right kind of environment and they will also need to control the various kinds of organizational activities or the management functions. So they will need to keep an eye on whether the management functions are going in the right direction they will have to take stock of the situations, they will have to ask for regular reports, information, make sure those informations are reaching them in the right manner, right format, at the right time to make further decisions. And then they will also need to see whether the work, right kind of work is being done, whether it is done in the right manner and whether it is the right uh, approach is being taken, whether people are being dealt with nicely, whether people are being uh, looked at properly so that everybody remains motivated and works together. So today we've discussed about the organizational behaviors first topic where we have talked about what are organizations. I am sure you must have seen a lot of organizations in your day-to-day -day life. Every product that you uh, can think of of consuming, whether it is a small product, whether the household day-to-day -day product or it is an organizational product, you would see it, is, it comes from some company or the other. Now next time when you look at a product or a service, try and identify, are you using a product, are you using a service? Which is the manufacturing organization or which is the service providing uh, organization that is giving you this kind of a service? What, how big is that organization or how small is that organization? Next time the courier boy comes to your home knocking and delivering a parcel, find out which organization is he representing, find, go online and see what are the different types of functions that this organization is doing, what are the different places that this organization is functional in, what is the history of this organization, how did they grow. This is how you will understand that organizations are all around us. We cannot do without organizations and organizations cannot do with, with it without people. So both of us are interdependent and uh, that is how it functions, that is how we all work to get towards our betterment and towards the organizational betterment. In the next session, we will talk about the second component of this particular topic which is organization behavior. In, so in the next session, we will talk about behavior. What is behavior? Why do we understand, uh, why do we need to understand organization behavior? What all does it uh, constitute of and what is it that we need to take care of? Thank you. I hope you enjoyed learning today. And with this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session on organizational behavior. And dear friends, uh, we would uh, like you to write to us to give your feedback. If you have any questions, then also you can mail us at info.cc at the rate in. This lecture is going to be uploaded on YouTube very soon for you. So keep watching us, keep writing us. We would be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you.